Hi and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Choma Mama. And if you're not new, welcome once again. You know I love to share content to help parents, especially working parents. We navigate this journey of parenting. There's so much we need to learn. It's better when we learn it together, okay? So this particular um, episode, really, I want to just talk about. There are two trending topics which I thought we could learn from, okay? Um, one is the sad story of Alanis Ogundupe. I think that trended ar around last year. Um, around the end of the year rather and it was really really trying to try here's a young girl beautiful girl from a you know and it was her dad that shared the story it was you know I can't even imagine how he was able to gather himself he was you know obviously devastated and he shared the story about his daughter beautiful bright I think she was about 26 graduate she had done her SCCA in record time or gotten through most of it in record time very brilliant girl you know and very focused obviously from a very lovely family um, I think her grandfather was the first person to, the first Nigerian to work in, you know, in a certain bank or something. He was just, you know, really, really silver spoon kid, so to speak. And this girl finished school and she met this guy. And obviously you could tell she had a close, a close relationship with her father because she shared it with her dad. She was like, ah, daddy, I've met somebody. And from day one, her father was like, oh no, he just wasn't happy. He just saw the picture. He didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't feeling it. And he was like, ah. You know why don't you just you know you need a boyfriend you didn't you didn't have one and you're able to focus now he just felt, I didn't, and he also had a bad feeling he just wasn't fe doing the uh, feeling the whole thing but he didn't want to say too much his daughter knew he wasn't really feeling it but he didn't want to say too much because he said he didn't want to discourage her from opening up further you know and i actually can uh understand where he was coming from you know and then um sadly so many things happened and she was also very close to her mother from all indications because when the guy infected her with herpes i don't know if you know what herpes is infected her with herpes so she couldn't move on he was extorting money for example he deceived her made her feel that he had lots of money and he was rich it was all a lie he was not trying to extort money from her he was blackmailing her she couldn't talk to other guys it was just a horrible thing this kid went from one a loving guy to a very vicious abusive guy you know, was insulting her, making her feel like her life was terrible or not. You know, she, he was just an awful individual. And she started having suicidal thoughts, started thinking of how she could kill herself. And her mother went to spend time with her. I was like, you know, she said, oh, I need to go, I need to go out. And her mom was like, oh, let's stay and have dinner. And she was like, no, I need to go. And from that going out, you know, sadly, she never came back home. And she ended up committing suicide. She threw herself in front of a moving train as she ended it. And it was, you just look at her picture. I just, you know, just a, a life waste. You could just see, this is a, a girl that, you know, her family had so many um, hopes and aspirations for. They dreamt of her getting married, having children, being successful in her career. The father was saying how he was a bit slow in his own career or whatever. And she was like, ah, daddy, let me show you. You know, that she was just trying to make him proud. I see how fast I'm doing stuff, you know. And he was devastated. And, Obviously, even after she died, the, the boy wasn't even so bad, he didn't care. After, you know, this is a girl you've manipulated, maybe he had something, nobody, I'm not sure he could have had something, maybe he had, had her nudes or something, I don't know. But he was still trying to extort money from the father. You can imagine that kind of character. And um, the other story that got me thinking, that one came out this year, you know, and I'm not here to talk about whether T.B. Jeshua uh, was genuine or not, I don't believe he was, but... My issue was, the, you know, you know, when I watched the documentary and I was, my heart went out for those young people because those people were like young stars when this, you know, when they came and they were, you know, manipulated and they were there for years. A lot of them were yeah, very young. The guys that were, if you look at the boys that were hanging around him, do you see how young those boys, if you've watched the documentary, they were very young boys. They're still quite young now. The uh, other people that hung around him, the girl from East Africa, the the other two from the UK, uh, I think one was called Rachel Ray. I can't remember the other one's name. I think Anika. <laughs> Anika was her. And they were all buried. They came as teenagers. And they were there for years. They were manipulated. They, they were de uh, sleep deprivation. They, could, they didn't have their... Um, they couldn't communicate with their families. No emails, no phone. Call. It was just ridiculous. They didn't know when the days... Uh, they didn't know. They lost track of time. They were, until they were able to escape. And you just think, what happened? How can we parents help our children and save God. How can we build resilient children? What can we do? And these are the things I, you know, I want to draw from these two stories. First, from the story of, um, you know, the, hor the horrible story of, you know, of Anand. You can see her parents loved her. So 
they did love her. I, I don't know what to, what what could have happened, but there's some things that I know help. And one of them is build resilience in your child. I think I have a video on resilience, and I have you um, posts on resilience. Build resilience in your child. It's very 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 important that you have a child who is resilient because the world is tough. Things happen. Things happen, and. If your child is resilient, one way you can build resilience is by help them, you know, with problem solving. Um, not helping them, but to introduce them to problem solving. Don't always try to do it for them. Let them figure it out. Ask them, okay, if this happens, what will you do? Okay, okay, interesting. Okay, so you know, go ahead. You know, for instance, a child is traveling and something, and their flight is cancelled. Don't immediately say, okay, uh -huh. this, no, no. Especially when you're dealing with older children, maybe a child of zero, you know, okay. So what do you think you should do? What are the options? Okay, then, okay, well. You know, what do you think works for you? You know, when your classes are starting. And allow them to go through that um, analytical process of thinking of what works for them and support them on it. And I'm talking from, you know, I've, I, I had a recent experience with that with, you know, with one of my children. And I just said, okay, you know what? Whatever you think is best, let's go. You're there to guide them, but you're not there to do everything for them and to solve every problem, you know, every problem for them, you know, because you need to make them resilient. This world is, this world is tough. And we need them to be strong. So build resilience in your child by allowing them to problem solve. And also you can do some role playing by asking them questions, how they would deal with certain things and all that. So it's very, very, very important that you do that so they can build those skills. Also connect with your children. It's very important that you're connecting with them. You're well bonded with them. They talk to you. You talk to them. So at, at every point in time, you know what's going on. I'm not saying you should be tracking them. Please do not, especially when they're getting older. You're not meant to be monitoring spirits, no. But the connection is that you know, they, they feel they can tell you stuff. Um, you know, they'll, they'll feel they'll be able to open. It starts also when you're able to open up with them as well. Okay, you tell them how you're doing. When you just have that good bond with your children. And that is really, really, really important that we don't helicopter our children. And that is also you know, connected to you wanting to do everything, wanting to hover around them. It doesn't help. It helps. It, it pulls them away. If you listen to this, um, the father of, you know, Badanis, one might wonder, okay, was it a good idea for him not to have insisted? You can, well, if, he, if the, the truth is that if he had even insisted and said, do not date that guy, those things don't really work. You know what? This is a girl you don't live in the same house with her. She's there in school or um, in England or, you know, whatever. Probably, of course, they're sexually active. The more you tell her to stay away, the more likely she's going to dig deeper into that relationship. So that's not really a good tactic to say, oh, I, you know, I forbid you from seeing that guy. It doesn't always work. That's the honest truth, especially with children. And that is so important is to help develop your children's intellect. Apart from academics, introduce them to classics, books where they are, you know, they're able to reason things through and think about how they're going to solve certain issues. Let, don't let it all just, just just be about fun and games or just hardcore books. You need to build their intellect so that they are able to reason and think about things through. Don't um, be too far from your children. You know, um, be a present parent. You might be wondering, present how? My child is in a different country. And that's why I talk about having communication. Like some people might say, oh, we can't talk. I'm not saying you talk to them every day. I'm not saying you should... Um, you should stalk them. It's it's wrong. I've said it. You know, you know, I'm monetary spirit. Was to have that con you know that connection with them. You know, so even if your child is present, your child is in boarding house. You know what's going on. You're in touch with their headmaster and all that. If they're in university, you know what's going on with them generally. It's very very important. They know that they have someone they can confide. They have someone they can talk to. Be that parent that they know they can talk to. They can trust. and know that look, mom or dad is not going to judge. Which is why we need to be careful the way we respond to issues when our children bring them up. If they see that look, if I bring this issue, my father is going to go ballistic. My mother is going to kill her. Is going to kill me. They will not bring stuff to you. They will hide it from you. They will say, look, the better I keep this thing away from my mother or father because it will not go well. That is what happens. I remember way back there was a child that committed suicide because they feel that way. And I just started thinking, oh my God, what kind of fear? What kind of fear of, oh, I failed, will drive a child of that age to commit suicide, you know? So we must make sure our children know the way we're we going to respond to issues that they can open up to us, even no matter how bad it is, no matter what we've done, no matter what they've done, they can actually say, mom, that this is what happened, I need your help, and you're going to help them. Yes, you might just have to chastise them, and you should when they've done something wrong. You need to correct them, but you need to be connected to them. That connection is so, so, so vital, so that you're, you're able to, so that this child, as this child is growing, they know they have you with them. And one thing that we forget when we're talking about, you know, manipulation of people, that even adults are manipulated, talk less of young people. Especially when you're, you know, you're under 21, your frontal cortex is still developing, so you, it's easier 
if you notice if you watch that uh, documentary that was why those young people were preyed on more because it's easier to manipulate younger people that's just that's why because that's why it's easier for young people to do very risky and silly stuff sometimes so we must make sure that we are building our children or build their value system so that they're able to think about things critically and reason things through there's so much we can do as parents to help our young people to make sure that they do not get caught up in such terrible situations. Another thing that is really, really important, yes, I've said that we should not um, do everything for our child, but we should also make sure we're loving them. There's something called, you know, overdoing and something called underdoing we must love our children there's a situation where you're doing something that is not love it's actually harmful because you're just smothering them with you know too many gifts and all that no 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 love them for who they are love them and teach them values don't let them feel suffocated by your love but let them know that mommy and daddy loves me and they are there for me so love your child let them feel that mom and dad are really really there for me and no matter what happens they will look out for me so it's you know there's so much that we can do and I, i've just mentioned a few things that you know to help us as we help these children you know as they grow into adulthood because like you like i said even adults people in their 30s 40s 50s have gotten into bad ways bad relationships manipulated by leaders or whoever you know talkless of younger people so that's where we parents come in. Let us let them be able to have that, you know, trust that they know that, oh, mom is there for me. She's going to look out for me. She's going to help me. Um, She's going to, you know, if I get into trouble, not that they feel that, oh, if I get into trouble, she'll rescue me. No, but they know that, look, no matter what, mom is there. You know, I can, I can talk to mom or dad. And most of all, this all is very important. We need to pray for our children. Let that be a daily thing we do. Pray for them. Put them in God's hands. Ask God to protect them. To not allow them to come to any harm. Because when they're very wicked, well, I've been saying these things since when they're wicked, well, and God is the one who is supreme. He sees everything. He knows all things. Ask him to protect and guide your children. Because even when you're not there, even, you know, at times we put, I always laugh, you know, when we do certain things, we're like, ah, let's protect our children. We put this, we put that. We put, you know, all sorts of gadgets. Yes, those things are good. CCTV is good and all that. But beyond all those things god is always there ask him to protect you look at alanis you know when you see them you just say this is this must have they must have had a great relationship but in spite of that you know let's continue to pray for our children for god's hand upon them that god will sustain them he will be their strength he will protect them the one that neither sleeps nor slumbers that he will be with them that he will continue to be their watch and their safeguard that everything they do that, that he will order their steps Call them, introduce your children to God early. It's very important. Let them grow up, you know, in your faith. Teach them about God very early so they can know they can depend on Him. So they can pray. So even when you're not there, when they're going through them and they're like, I can't call mom, I can't call dad, they should be able to call on God. They should be able to call on God. And that brings me to my last point. They should be able to call on you. But if for any chance they cannot call on you, let there be another adult that they can call on. Let there be someone that they can talk to. Let there be somebody that they can that can help them, that can guide them, that can teach them what they need to do. Someone that can be a buffer. For any, for instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, maybe you're a much older couple, and you're just in a different generation from your children. As like God, parents come in. It'll be good to have a parent who is on the same wavelength with them, who can actually guide them and teach them stuff and be that buffer when they feel that ah, mommy will not understand, but they should please understand. No matter how old you are, please understand. I'm begging you. So let's continue to pray for our children. As we pray for them, God will continue to protect them and keep them for us. Okay? God will teach them Himself, and their peace will be great, and our peace will be great as parents as well. God bless you all. Have a great day, and talk to you soon.